it is because I really wanted to do good in school. I was always doing good in school. And I was thinking how hard it is to do two practices a day because at that time already after one year, I was doing double practices a day. So I was traveling to Castella one hour with the bus and one hour back. I was like, uh, I was learning stuff for, like, I had a book to a school book just to, I didn't have time to, 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 to learn and to study. So I was just like studying in the bus and I was coming. So, and then I would go to school. And then after school, I would go to another practice to Castella for one hour with the bus each way. So it's like two hours. And I was coming back from Castella to split 1 a.m. in the morning. 1 a.m. in the morning, I was like, 15 years, like in a big city, I was just like walking home. There is like literally no one on the street. And at that time I realized it was my, uh, it was my uh, freshman year in high school. I realized that if I wanna keep up good work at school and if I wanna keep up good work on the court, I need to change my lifestyle. I need to go somewhere else and, and try to excel in both because I really wanted to excel in both. So I moved to Pula, which is like 12 hours away. Why, I did, you want, why did you want to excel in both? Because I believe, uh, I always believed that, that I think like for myself, I always believe that I want to be a, a complete human being. Like, and you cannot develop in, in every facet of your own being if you just focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. And this is what I truly believe that I, I, I felt like school, school gave me a different window to my life that allowed me to experience myself in a different way and to see what, what interests me other than sport. Because, okay, I was really lucky that I found volleyball and it's like, in the terms of it's a love of my life and it, it gave me so much and my career grew and and I became global and became super popular and super successful, but I didn't know that at the time. And I, I was not sure if I just want to do one thing. I wanted to see who I am in my completeness, right? So I felt like if I just, if I just like leave school, which was an option, if I just leave school, I will be stuck with one thing, which can be the best thing of my life, which it is, it, it proved to be, but do I wanna really, really just be an athlete, only an athlete, only in that small little volleyball window, right? Mm -hmm. Or I wanna be something more that I try to understand not only volleyball, but different kinds of sports. If I try to understand other things that interest me, for some people it's fashion, for some people it's engineering, I don't know. I, I, for, for a long time in my life, I really wanted to be a, uh, become a doctor because my late uh, aunt, she died, uh, she died in the war, she was a doctor. So I wanted to be a doctor and I was really thinking, everyone was telling me like, you cannot go to school and be a professional athlete. I was like, why not? But it was like many, many years ago. And I was like, why not? Because I know I'm capable of it. Why do you don't give me, like, why does the system does not give me an opportunity to do both, to excel at both, right? Yeah. So I really felt it like deep inside. Like I, I always, I always rebelled against the notion that if you're an athlete, you should be just this. Yeah. I always did it. Like since I, since I was a kid, really, 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 really long, young. But um, so it just stuck with me and I was good at school. It came naturally. And I just wanted to keep, keep at it, to be good at it because I felt like it's really important for me mentally on the other side to to just to just have this counterbalance to everything I was I was going through in sports, right? Yeah. That's that's how I felt. I mean, this is how I still feel because every every few years I uh, every few years I just 
do something. Yeah. Uh, last year I, I, I finished my master's because I really feel it enriches my life, it enriches my perspective and the sheer communication with people who share that time with me gives me opportunity to grow and to have certain different ideas, different things that I can explore. If Is it business? Is it new opportunity? Is it new idea about volleyball? Is it new perspective about volleyball or some other sport? I don't know, but it really, it really helps me in, in this way. Yeah. So, okay, you decide to go for sport and education. You are moving to different cities to make this happen. Um, then you are joining the national team and now you have a choice on how to make some moves, right? Around 18, 19, 20 is when we really start to, well, we, I'm so European now. What is wrong with me? I've lived here for way too long. Oh my gosh, I said we. Um, athletes here in Europe are, you know, totally, you're, it's like, it's always been pro. Even if it's technically semi-pro, like when you're playing on that second team for uh, Mladost or uh, Rijeka or uh, Kastola or whatever, you are still in the pro world. And so that pipeline just takes you as far as you really want to go. Um, but honestly, as far as you just can show that you can go, right? So you're showing that you can go really far. A lot of people are getting really interested in you. Then you decide to go to Cal, right? You go to yeah. Cal. What is, what is that, what goes into that decision to go to Cal? And then what went into the decision to leave Cal when you went to play your first pro contract and how'd you finish school and all that? Yeah, well, um, the thing is, uh, my decision to go, uh, to go to Cal was really controversial at that time because I had like pro offers already, like to join Bergamo, to join uh, Reggio Calabria, uh, no, Reggio, Reggio Calabria, I think it was. Couple of really, really strong teams. And I just didn't feel, um, I felt like I'm up to it, but I, I first thing I didn't want to sit on a bench. Yeah. That's the first thing. And by sitting on a bench, I did, I mean, no disrespect to that. It's just like, I felt like if I'm gonna sacrifice this period of my life where I can actually get my education and still not feel any pressure to succeed professionally, then if I have to sacrifice my education because you have to, because you're going pro, then I would love to play on the highest level. If I'm not playing on the highest level, if I have to sit somewhere one year, two years, that's already like half of my education time lapse, right? Mm -hmm. That's already two years. So it's like half of four years, right? I, I could be getting like, I'll be, I'll be halfway through my degree and not feel, not like not feel anywhere bad about it. And then I just decided, okay, if I ever wanna do both, this is the time. This is the time to do it. And I really did something that everyone told me, you're gonna ruin your career. You're never gonna succeed after this. No one came from US and succeeded, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, <laughs> fine, no one did it, but yeah. I'm not no one. Yeah. You know, if, 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 I, if, if someone feel, feels like they should do it, then I feel like they should do it because you know, the odds goes into your in like in your favor somehow something happens aligns whatever if you feel it if you have this instinct that you should do it just do it everything will go well and i just went against all common advice that everyone was giving me and because i really felt like i need to do both i really i really felt like it of course uh, the uh, influence of uh, federation was really big at that time, and they didn't have any connection to you to the U.S. system, to U.S. Uh, to NCAA. So they had no idea. There was no communication, so there was no perception whether it's a good or bad thing. You know, like it, mm -hmm. 
generally was perceived as bad thing, but just because there was a lack of communication and there were no clear channels where you can like communicate and see and, and compare and uh, compare programs and see what you can do for each other doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. Yeah. So I just went, I went and uh, we, we did great. We did great. I think uh, my, my freshman year was like so-so, but uh, our team was in development and we had the great coaches and we worked really well. And, you know, just go like, I was surrounded with other Olympians, other world champions. That's what I was going to ask you. And can then, you. Can you maybe the other sports, okay, we won't be able to, they won't understand those. Can you throw out some of the volleyball players from that generation? that you know were international that you well log and thumb yeah <laughs> yeah with log we played like twice a year <laughs> it yeah. was like the biggest the biggest game and then uh ogona namani and then kim villaby uh april ross mm -hmm. in the states uh kim glass uh, so you're playing like so you're playing with like literally tons of, of players that have now gone to tons of world championships and olympics and yes. things like that yes. and people yes. back home were concerned because they really didn't know they weren't educated about that system because it is it's like it's foreign just like your world of, of pro is foreign to us in america um yeah. our pro our our uh semi pro which is ncaa is very foreign here so they could not know this and it's like this is what i talk to young athletes about a lot is like you're going into a league where it feeds our national team how could there not be good or great players it's like impossible they are everywhere they're scattered around exactly and you have you're going to a league that that has two almost 200 teams yeah. it's bound to produce champions it's like impossible, like mathematically impossible to not produce quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were okay. So you're playing these few years there. Then uh, yeah. what happens there? What are, what 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 did you accomplish while you're there? And then let's transition into how you decided to go. Uh, well, uh, it really gave me an opportunity to grow as a player. They gave me a lot of uh, responsibility. I was a captain really early, like my sophomore year, they made me captain, which was awesome. a really, really great honor. And uh, we had this project there. Uh, the only problem was like, it was really taxing because I had so many national team responsibilities and um, a champ a European championship, but then junior world championship, uh, everything was like stacked together. And then I had, I was late for my freshman year. I was late to school, like one month and a half. It's like almost impossible. People were looking at me like I was walking zombie because I need to like get back on track with class, with everything. So over the years that just the load became bigger. Yeah. And it was, that was not the problem. It was just like, I wanted, my problem was that I wanted to excel everywhere I go. And I started to feel that I will not be able to excel a national team as much because I just don't have that much time. Like, you, you understand where I'm going at? Like, yeah. Yeah. it was an NCAA season, then spring training, then like, finals and finals and midterms You've been and, in school. And, and everything. You had been in school for how long by this point? Uh, uh, three and a half years. Okay, so I mean. Three and a half years, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, so this is like yeah, right around graduation time. Yeah. Well, it, it, I had to go through two more semesters, so one more year. Because you had but lost this time, time, but like, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, and at that time, I felt like my game matured enough and I got, everything happened so quickly and I got this super offer from a Russian champion. And I was just like, and then my federation really encouraged me to go because of course they want you to go pro and be successful, especially if it's a, a league champion, a Russian champion, one of the best teams at, at that time. So everything happened together and I, I was just like, what should I do? And 
how I broke it down like a couple of years ago when I went to US, that was the same decision making. I was just like, okay, this is it. I will go. Yeah. Right. Because I think I'm ready. Even though I think if I stay one more year, we will be super successful because we recruited great and we had a great team. But like at that time, like at that point, everything I did, I felt like it was selfish. Why? Because like either I let Cal a little bit disappointed or I let national team a little bit disappointed. And I really, really, really wanted to do well with the national team. Like I really wanted to get back being the big dog with the national team because you know, Croatia is a small country. We have like zero infrastructure for these things. It's not like US super organized. So kind of like em emotions played in and I was like, I want to do this for my country because it'll be good for my national team. Mm -hmm. At this time, right? of course, you've had how many years of experience with national team and you've been playing how much? Just so athletes can understand this. You're not like, you I was... have not played on the national team yet. I played all the time and I was uh, with the uh, A team. Uh, it was like since 98, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. Yeah. Six so years. Been... So it was going into seventh year. Yeah. It's a lot of experience, like a lot of good and bad memory. Like it weighs on you. The, yeah. uh, the success is heavy but when you're unsuccessful and you try something so hard like in Cal I was super successful and then we were super successful and I was still playing great in the national team but we didn't we haven't arrived right and it starts to weigh on you like you start to find try to find solutions try to find solutions yourself like individually like what should I do what can I do better blah 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 you know like and at yeah. that time, when you're young and, and, and talented and everything, you just, you just want to wreck the world, right? You have this energy. You want to do everything. You want to, and it's not coming around. And so what, what we did with Cal, because we kind of turned the program around and we were really successful and we had a great thing going on. I wanted to do the same thing with national team. And, you know, like, because you see everything that's going good at Cal and you see, I like, I want to do this for my home country. Mm -hmm. Right. You want to, I, I want to do it with like for Croatia because Croatia is like irrelevant, not irrelevant, but like globally irrelevant. Yeah, you, I, they, I hadn't, they didn't understand. have a big status at all in the, the no, world. No, no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like everything came into that decision and that decision for me was extremely emotional and, and extremely difficult. And I just like went with it and like kind of to this day, I still feel bad about it, but for, for because of everything that could have happened at Cal, but at the same time, it launched my career and launched me in totally different direction and it gave me I mean in two years in, in in Russia we won everything we won the cup the super cup the championship it was it was really something mm -hmm. it was really I think something. One of, can I jump can I jump in and say something here like what's really important here to remember is you had history with the national team you go to America against people thinking that is a good idea yes. at all. You accomplished something there. You knew that you were still developing and that you wouldn't be a starter at that moment when you chose to go to America. You wouldn't be a starter internationally, right? Um, yeah. There was a chance that you'd ride the bench. And so why ride the bench when you could play and get your education and get this out of the way? And then you realize, you know, I've done some things here now too. I am stronger. I am better. I feel actually ready. When I, when I play, I know I can take this next step. And now you decide, okay, it's valuable for me to give back to my nation because I have this history and I'm ready to actually give, right? I've been patient. I've done, I've done the harder things, which is go against the yeah. advice of people that say, no, stay here. Don't go anywhere. Do these things. Yeah. And now you're ready and things align. And I think this is really important because some people will hear this, Mia. You know, we as humans, they'll hear it and they'll go, yeah. oh, that's my reason to do this now because 
You know, yeah. these people are telling me this and I'm gonna go against that and do what I feel is right. But what is really important here is to understand how you made those decisions. They were actually very rational decisions and you understood your level and that if you wanted opportunity, the opportunities that were presenting themselves right now that are like that eye candy and you dream of having this high level and doing big things, but you knew on some level, I'm not so ready for them. So when I'm more ready, of course, they're still going to be there. So why yeah. act now too early and then in some way fail because I give up more than I yeah. get immediately, right? And I want all you kids, all you young adults to understand that. That's very important. Don't try to flip this and, and merge it into like something to make yourself do something ridiculous, you know? So yes. anyways, okay, go ahead, yeah. sorry. You want everything, and, things and, are going well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the years in Russia were amazing. And my, my coach was one of the greatest coaches of all time, probably the greatest coach. I don't know if someone Name. will say it's Bernardino, someone will say it's Lamping, but Nikolai Karpol is a legend of his own. He made volleyball. And he was my coach. I love him to death. Really, we had some really great times, some really bad times. We had everything, but I, I share enormous respect for this man. And he was, he's one of the biggest geniuses I worked with. And I, I, I really had a great time and he taught me a lot and I was surrounded with great players. And, you know, like if I, at a certain point, he wanted me to stay there. I, I, I felt like I could stay there for many more years to come. It's just like, it was so hard. The traveling was the hardest part. Like I felt like- Because Russia is massive. <laughs> and you know, we, we were playing Champions League and in those two yeah. years it happened that we would play, we would play uh, like a Russian league somewhere. It was like minus 20 Celsius degrees and minus 20. And then we would go, uh, one time we went to play bucket bunk in uh, Istanbul and then in Istanbul was like plus 18 or something. So it's like 38 point difference and you come and you like, like I just want to sleep and- And you just die, flew you know? from very far away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. stuff yeah, yeah. like that. And then one year, one year we played in uh, Gran Canaria and Gran Canaria was plus 28. So it's like 50, uh, 50 degree uh, difference plus everything else so you just go back and forth back and forth back and forth and uh i just felt like this is great but i don't necessarily need to do it indefinitely and uh, maybe uh maybe i should try some different type of volleyball and at that time italian league was considered to be the best league in the world and i got an offer from there and i was just like i'm just gonna go there Okay, and, uh, and it was actually, can we, yeah. can we, sorry, because we, well, I want to make sure yeah. we, we stay on some kind of time, but also I want, I don't, people can hear your story to hear a lot about these teams, but can we do something really quick just to walk through yeah, sure. then until like now, because there's way too much, Mia. <laughs> like, there's way <laughs> too much. So like we, how about you just try to remember in order the teams and give the team name, the country, they all mm -hmm. were A1 level okay. teams and try to give like some key players from that season, whether they were on your team or they were opponents that you played against, that would be, I'm talking like one or two names that people are just gonna okay. know. And then that way we give these athletes a chance. Do some research, athletes, do some okay. research, like look up these people. So we talked about the States, right? More or less. Russia, in uh, Russia, I played, uh, against Gamova, uh, Ekaterina Gamova. Uh, I played with Lisa Tyshenko. I played with uh, um, Sheshenina, the setter. Uh, I played with uh, Nastasia Belikova, the middle blocker. Uh, great, great middle blocker, by the way. And uh, I play oh, so many people. I, with Yumilka Ruiz, with uh, uh, Fernandez, uh, two Cuban uh, Olympians. Uh, I play with them. 
God, so many talented players that like yeah. I cannot remember the name, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, but I hope they forgive me. Uh, <laughs> then in Italy, <laughs> in Italy, I played with uh, Raquel San Giuliano. Uh, I played uh, team I guess, names. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I played in Forlì. I played in Piacenza. I played in Vicenza. I played in Perugia. Uh, Nocera Umbra. Um, I played with Raquel San Giuliano. I played with uh, Paula Croce. I played with uh, with Veronica Giannoni. I played with Chiara Dallora. I played against Ma Poljak, uh, Francesca Piccinini, Natasha Smokrovic, uh, Pir, uh, Ljuba Sokolova, uh, Elisa Togut. Uh, I played with uh, Valentina Righetti. I got so many, so many yeah. great players. Uh, with Italy. Monica De Gennaro. <laughs> There's too many. And we then gotta, I, like yeah, five and then something. after Italy, <laughs> after Italy, I went to uh, South Korea. Yeah. Okay, and there I played against Madeline Montano, uh, against Kenny Moreno Pino, against uh, uh, Sanya Popovic. Briefly, uh, uh, Alessia Rechliuk, I played against her, but also I played against her in uh, in in Turkey, and then uh, I played with She's a lot of for uh, Galatasaray South now. Yes, and I played against uh, with a lot of uh, national team players from South Korea. Okay, and then after that, I went to Turkey. And I played against everyone. I played uh, against uh, Malgozerta Glinka, Milena Rašić, uh, Maja Poljak, Neslihan Demir, uh, Ljuba Sokolova, uh, Tatjana Košeljeva, um, uh, Kim Jong Jong, uh, uh, Christine Furst, Christi, uh, Christine Furst, uh, uh, Osge Kirdar. Uh, I played at Bursa, Chanakale, uh, Fenerbahce, Beshtar. Okay. Those teams. So. <laughs> and it's Japan. Coming. I forgot about Japan. There, there we yeah. go. That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I forgot about Japan. So I played in Denso, Erebis, and uh, I played against Saori Kimura. I played. Uh... Oh, great players. Uh, I played with the legendary libero, uh, Yuko Sano. I love her to death. Really great, great, great player. Like, I love her. I love how she, I, I wish she, she could play still today. Nice. Uh, All right. Let's, let's, yeah. let's put the pen in it there because it's, it's a ton. Yeah. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because this series that I'm doing with you and the reason why we're, we're doing all this is to try to help athletes. And it, order for us to help you athletes, it's really important to understand the background of the people that are trying to help you and to understand like the crap that they went through, the turmoil internally, right? That we have to make these big decisions and you had to make massive decisions in terms of like, you know, leading to championships and national team things. And we all make these decisions on whatever levels that we're gonna make it to. But it's really important to understand that when you, start trying to make decisions, find people that have done stuff. Mia has done so much. And I, even as a national team athlete who wasn't able to play on all of those tournaments and didn't get to win so many championships and blah, blah, blah. I find it so like such an advantage to be able to pick her mind and hear her advice and make decisions based on some influence that she's gonna have on me because she's gone through so many different things. So this is why, right, Mia, we are setting this up and we are talking about this yeah. because if you meet Mia or if you meet somebody else, they're not just gonna list off these things they've done and these people they've played. <laughs> no, we're doing this to help people have perspective on why, not to brag or anything like that. So I'm really looking forward to the next uh, talk can you just give some words to these young ladies about uh, exactly why they should be tuning in and um, 
what this means to you for to start this stuff in Croatia because you're you've been playing for so long you're still playing right you have not retired yeah. yet and right now it's just like okay let's invest and great that this timing came together because now I can make sure that I can do some things that you might not be able to do while you're here because this is my new home yeah. right so yeah, yeah. well uh it means why why Croatia right it means so much because we like like you said like individually you invest in yourself but individually I'm also Croatian and that that link cannot be abolished and um, you always in the root of you in the root of yourself always want to give back and make a difference in a country where you came from mm -hmm. and I'm Croatian I mean there's no hiding behind it and there's no going around it. And uh, for me, being super successful in volleyball will just gives me a reason to make, try to make volleyball relevant in Croatia, more relevant than it is today and give just uh, a glimpse, a window and an opportunity for these young athletes to succeed in the same sport that I succeeded. We like, mm -hmm. You did it, I did it in our own different way. We succeeded and uh, like we can always debate who is more successful than the other, but it really doesn't matter because, because like you walk the path, you know how it's done. And this is important. Many, many people get lost along the way. And is this whole, uh, this whole thing, this whole idea is about giving back and creating opportunities that young people maybe don't know that they, they have, that they can reach out and they can get, they can get help from me, from you, for, from us and from different people that are super interested to share this, uh, this experience and these ideas with us. And it matters everything because to me, because uh, I didn't have this growing up, I found really, I was lucky enough to find great people who helped me, like different indiv individuals who helped me. And it's, you can call it fate or chance or luck or whatever, but um, it happened to me and I'm super grateful. And I just feel like other countries have systems, have programs that create successful athletes. And I just feel like, we know how it's done. We should create it. We should help create it because you, of course you cannot do it alone. You need, you need friends and you need colleagues and you need many more people to make, and then you need interested athletes to make it happen. Because at the end we do this for the athlete. We do this so we can create opportunities for young kids to, to be able to choose what, what they want to do with life and to be able to bring out the best out of themselves. Yeah, I think it's really important to, um, to say two things. Why I'm doing this, why you're doing this. We talked about selflessness today a little bit and it's like, it's really important for other athletes to understand. I'll tell you why we're doing this. When you sit there and you close your eyes and you think how much volleyball and how much life means to you. And then you imagine how those things are possible. Imagine those things without other people that you love or that you care about, okay? Yeah. It doesn't exist the same way. It's impossible. Yeah. Why we do this is because we lean into that part more right now. We have the space and we care about it and we understand that this is the way to give back. We should not yeah. take from athletes. We should not exploit them. We should not trick them. We should support them and know that if we do that, it's for the greater good. And what that means is basically, if we're all helping one another, we can all grow up better. We can all rise, yeah. right? But if we're yes. trying to be tricky and we're trying to be sneaky and we have these ways to, to screw people over when we're just acting like we're an angel or trying to help, then it's actually going to hurt us. It's gonna hurt you and it's gonna hurt the whole volleyball sure. and global community. So it makes no sense. That's why we're doing this. Um, can you say just because what we were trying to think about is like, how do we not create waves and how do we not uh, 
scare people to think that we're trying to take. No, we want to supplement. We want to support. And so like for clubs out there, you know, clubs in Croatia, okay. clubs around the world, wherever I travel to, and I'm like, hey kid, I will get in the gym with you for an hour right now for yeah. free, just because I see that you work hard. I see that you want this and I know that I can invest this time. And if any of you ever reach out to me or Mia, we're gonna respond because we care, because we know people cared about us because you know how hard it was to find people. And we got lucky that most of the time we didn't find them, they found us, why? Because people, yeah, that's true. People that care like that and people that want to give that time, they want to give that time because they see you giving that time and they see that you might not have somebody able to say, here, here's one more hand. Not I'm your only hand. Here's one more hand. And let me connect you with other hands so that you, if you ever need to be pulled up or if you ever need to be pushed a little bit, we got you because we know that you're doing this for the right reasons, right? So anything to say from you, to the yeah. world of volleyball in Croatia, coaches, teams, this stuff, we'll end there. Well, this is uh, this is what I've been saying to whoever asked me. This is not not about. Um, uh, this is not a competition. It's just, uh, in a way, uh, try like we try to bring tools to help clubs coaches, individual athletes, like not individual, like volleyball, volleyball players who like to work individually. We, I believe we like to give them tools for them to su succeed. We give, a, a, yeah. we make their, like you lose so much time. You lose so much time trying to teach and preach and whatever, when you're like a coaching an actual volleyball team that you don't have, sometimes you don't have time or gym time to, do three or four really individual things that will make your overall quality dr dramatically better, yes. right? And in the, like, and athletes lose in this. They're the biggest losers, the young athletes, because they don't have the uh, awareness to, to understand, okay, I need 10 more minutes of doing just this, or I need to ask and, uh, to ask about blocking or I need this. They don't have, they're too young to have this awareness. Only later when they become pros, they understand through comparison what they're lacking and they try to make build up, up mm -hmm. to fix it, make up for it. For it. And, and already maybe sometimes it's already too late. Yeah. And this is just like what, what, what we're trying to say is like, we bring, expertise to you just use it it's a tool whatever you need yeah. we will provide because we are just extra set of eyes we are extra set of brains whatever and together we're smarter and we're more capable and this is all about bringing level in croatia to not to a higher level bubble level in croatia to some higher ground yeah. and i think it's 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 because Many years, you don't know about this, but many, many years ago when I played in Croatian League, Croatian League was really tough, really tough, higher level than, than it is today, unfortunately. But the, the level of competition can come back that high. And once you have a good level of competition, the national team is better, the players are better, the teams get more engaged because it's like, it makes you, it's the whole system is a competition. So it makes you work harder. It makes you mm -hmm. be better. Yeah. And when you're better then everyone around you tries to get better and you kind of yeah. push each other. It's about healthy competition, right? And so I exactly. love that you're so focused on this and we can do this stuff here. And you know that I'm extremely globally minded and just like, since I've lived in so many different places for me, it's like, I want yeah. all of these Balkan athletes to understand. And when I can, and when Mia can, I know we're going to be going to Asia. We will go to other places to do similar things, but this is where her oh, home sure. is. And this is why you're so tied to this. And I want to give an example for teams, for federations, for players. Imagine you're in school. Imagine you just don't have time during the school day. What do you do? You make a study group. It doesn't matter if you make that with another person at your home or at their home or with your parent or at school at a study group after hours. This is what we're trying to do. Make a study group, a way for you to get a little bit more very intentional work 
so that it helps you where your main place is. And that is the key here. So I look forward to talking with you more about that. March 12th, that's in two days on Friday at 1.30, we will do this again. So tune in everybody. Thank you so much, Mia. And I, I can't you. wait to see you then. Yeah, see you in two days. All right, bye. Bye. Okay, I'm gonna end it on this Zoom too.